<clears throat> okay, welcome everyone. Uh, those of you that are watching on video too, we welcome you. And uh, we're in 1 Peter 4 today. Uh, we're looking at messages given to us by the Apostle Peter that he wrote to the church. And uh, we're going to be uh, going through the entire chapter 4, but we're going to do it in four sections. And we'll... Um, this may be, this lesson may be a little bit shorter than the others, but there's a lot of meat here that we're going to look at. So, um, at the top of your notes, the point of this lesson, the major point is that we as believers want to glorify God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit in all that we do or say. And Peter, in this chapter, is reminding us that we should think and do as believers for God's glory. For God's glory. And we're going to be looking at ways that uh, we can uh, uh, be a Christian today and God gets the glory. And we're going to look at four ways. One, the first one is a changed mind and a changed life. The second one that we're going to be looking at is loving one another. The third one is suffering for Christ. And the last one is Judgment beginning in the house of God. So let's walk down through these four and see what lessons uh, Peter the fisherman has for us today. Change minds and lives. This is the first six verses of 1 Peter 4. So we'll read those verses. <clears throat> Therefore, since Christ suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourself also with the same mind. For he who has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh for the lusts of men, but for the will of God. For we have spent enough of our past lifetime in doing the will of the Gentiles when we walked in lewdness, lust, drunkenness, revelings, drinking parties, and abominable idolatries. In regard to these, they think it strange that you don't run with them anymore in the same flood of dissipation, speaking evil of you. They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. So for this reason the gospel was preached to those who, were dead, who are dead now, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh, but live according to God in the Spirit. So we're, we're looking at glorifying God through our minds, changed minds, and our lives. If somebody tells you, arm yourself, what would they be telling you to get ready for? If they say, arm yourself, well, they would be saying, get ready for a battle. Get ready to fight. And Peter tells us here that we are to arm ourselves with the same mind that is in Christ Jesus. We know we're in a battle against Satan. So part of what we do in order to prepare for that is for our mind to be like Christ's mind. And then we can uh, arm ourselves, really, for this battle that we're involved in. We no longer live in the flesh after the lusts of men. Um, Peter talks about walking in the flesh before you became a believer. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. Do you remember? I remember. Yeah. Before we became a believer, we were walking in the flesh. Now, I, it would be interesting if we could just have a moment, uh, we probably won't do it today, but to ask each one of you, when you became a believer and you stopped walking in the flesh, how many of those people that you were walking in the flesh with all of a sudden had nothing to do with you. Not only that, but Peter says they actually speak evil of you. They actually make up bad things to say about you once you stop walking in the flesh with them. And <clears throat> so Peter tells us they think it's strange in verse 4 that you do not run with them. Okay? But they're going to give an account to him who's ready to judge. So they will give an account even though you uh, 
probably have tried to encourage them to follow the Lord, and they may have chosen not to do that. So, they think it's strange. Uh, there is a phrase here, we probably should talk about this just for a minute, so that it isn't taken out of context. Verse 5, They will give an account to him who is ready to judge the living and the dead. For this reason the gospel is preached to those who are dead. Now, this doesn't mean that somebody went into the grave, into Hades, into the place of the dead, and preached the gospel so that people that were already dead would receive Jesus Christ and be saved. That is not what this is saying. This is saying that those people back then had the gospel preached to them. But today, during the well, today, during the time that Peter is writing this, those people had died. So that's what he means when he says that um, for this reason the gospel is preached also to those who are dead, that they might be judged according to men in the flesh. It was preached to them when they were alive, but now they're dead, is what he was saying. But they have had the gospel preached to them, and so they are responsible for that. They will be responsible to God for hearing the gospel. So, first way that we glorify God is allowing Christ to change our minds and change our lives. And every one of us here has stories to tell about how our lives have changed and how our minds have changed. Uh, Jesus has been really good to us here, to each one of us in this church. The second way that uh, we talk about God getting glory is if we love one another. Let's read verses 7 through 11. The end of all things is at hand. Therefore be serious, watchful in your prayers, and above all have fervent love for one another, for love will cover a multitude of sins. Be hospitable to one another without grumbling, as each one has received a gift to minister it to each other as good stewards of the manifold grace of God. If anyone speaks, speak as the oracles of God. If you minister, let him do it as with the ability which God supplies, and that all things God may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom belongs the glory and the dominion forever and ever. In this section, Peter says the end of things is at hand. You know, we've looked at uh, signs in the heavens. We've looked at uh, uh, prophecy in the Old Testament and New Testament. And we know from all of that that all those signs and all those prophecies are pointing to Jesus coming back, we believe, fairly soon. The time is at hand, Peter felt. We, looking at what we see today, the things that are going on in the world, it, it has to, the coming of Jesus has to be close. We don't know the day or the hour or when, but we know it's got to be close. I like this scripture that comes from Proverbs 10 and 12, which says, Love covers a multitude of sins. In the church, sometimes we don't overlook sin. But we overlook the fact that, I hope you do, that I stumble around. It's just like uh, tonight. I overlooked something that we said we were going to do here at church today, and I overlooked that. You know, and if you, uh, if you, if you can overlook my um, overlooking, then um, that's a good thing. And that kind of love covers a multitude of sins. Also, forgiving one another covers a multitude of sins. And, uh, and we as a church, all churches are expected to honor one another and love one another. And then Peter gets specific. He says, be hospitable to each other. What that means is, uh, and, and sometimes it, it requires time and effort and money on our part, but invite people not into just your home, but into your life. Be hospitable. Let, uh, have a relationship with people. Um, but he says do it without grumbling. Because it is an effort. It does take an effort on our part to do that. And sometimes 
It's not the most convenient thing when we uh, end up being hospitable, you know. But we, we glorify God and we go ahead and we use our abilities and, and we're always willing to help one another. And then finally, all of this results in God being glorified. So our third point is suffering in Christ. And Peter has written to us several times already about suffering. And, but he talks about suffering as a good thing. And he explains why God has us experience fiery trials. Peter says, be aware that fiery trials are not strange. In other words, you should expect them as a believer, fiery trials. Uh, rejoice that you're actually partaking in Christ's sufferings. And when his glory is revealed, you will be glad that you were able to partake in his sufferings. Um, the spirit and glory of God rests on each one of us. Even as we go through trials, God's <coughs> spirit and glory rests on us. So, suffer as a Christian. Don't be ashamed. Let God be glorified in our suffering. Okay? And then the last point that Peter makes to us today is in 1 Peter 4, 17 through 19. And there he's talking about the house of God. So let's read those verses, 17 through 19. For the time has come for judgment to begin at the house of God, and if it begins with us first, what will be the end of those who do not obey the gospel of God? Now, if the righteous one is scarcely saved, where will the ungodly and sinner be? So the last thing Peter's reminding us today is that we are in a time now, this time, where we have the beginning of judgment in the house of God. Judgment begins with believers first. Um, we suffer sometimes as part of the judgment of God. Um, you know, you can be sorry that you've done something. I can, I can apologize. I can say I'm sorry. I can repent. But a lot of times there are still consequences. You can't, you can't stop those consequences from whatever it was. And many times. And so suffering ends up being part of the judgment of God on believers. But we suffer according to the will of God. And we know that because He's the Creator, He is committed to our good. And so we commit our, ourselves to Him. And He is glorified. So think about these four ways that Peter tells us that God is glorified through each one of us. Through our changed mind and our changed lives. People see your changed lives. People understand your changed thinking. You actually think different now than you used to. And then the love for one another, people see it. People see it. And they know that it's there. And that gives God the glory. And then we end up suffering sometimes for God. And, it, and we give Him the glory because that suffering produces patience in us. And then with our patience, we become more like Christ. And then finally, the judgment begins here at the house of God. That's talking about among all believers. And so we have to look at our lives. If there's sin there, take it out. Uh, ask God to help us remove it. Uh, because judgment begins with us. And the rest of the people, they'll be judged that aren't believers. But, but it's going to begin with us. So we want to repent and ask God to forgive us. And we want to thank Him for some of our suffering sometimes because it makes us stronger Christians and makes us patient uh, with other people. So this is the message from 1 Peter today. And uh, I think it's real pointed, right to the, to the point, uh, four facts. So if you get a chance, you go back this week and read back through those verses and I think it'll, you'll really be blessed. Let's ask God's blessing on this message. Father, today, your fisherman apostle Peter 
wrote to the church and he's written to us about how we can uh, encourage people to give you glory and we can give you glory. And we've looked at four ways that Peter has talked to us as a church. Father, we pray you will help us in each of these four areas so that you get the glory, not us, but you get the glory from changed minds and changed lives and uh, from loving one another and, uh, and also being a servant who suffers. And, and we thank you, Lord, for the opportunity to, to experience all of those things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Amen.